we are not in these jobs to be popular. We are here to do the right thing, and I will do the right thing. We must sort this thing out. Honorable members, we have to sort this thing out. So, Golosh, I am sorting it out. That's what we are trying to do. I wish this gentleman was cooperative in the manner in which the facts are clear to him. And as I told you, Mr. Chairman, I will bring the file to you so that you peruse it yourself and see what we are talking about. It is not right that when we are trying to make a genuine effort, we are being called lords of impunity, that we are making the wrong mistakes and so on and so forth. None of these, even our colleagues in the media who are reporting this matter, none of them has gone through the facts that we are putting before them. None of them has asked the very basic questions. Now, I want to see what the Law Society of Kenya is going to do and the judiciary, now that the officers have actually lied on oath, filed affidavits in court lying. As for relations between us and the, and, and the judiciary, I want to say this. The spokesperson for the executive branch of government by constitution and by practice is His Excellency the President. I don't have powers to be a spokesperson for the executive branch of government. But I can make this observation. From this experience and the experiences we've had in the past, we are in a unique place. And you, more than any members of parliament, because you are at the security committee, need to know this. Our sector is the one that is affected most by some of the decisions that are made when they are not balanced. Why are we so bothered about the checks? The constitution expects us to uphold checks and balances. Why are we not bothered about the balances? A clique of judicial officers, that's why I would not say, I would be very honest and say, this is not about the judiciary. It is about a clique of judicial officers who have gotten into an unholy relationship with a clique of activist lawyers and oppositionist civil society people with the intention of humiliating the government, stalling the government, <coughs> embarrassing the government, and making it impossible for the government to perform. I want to give you data you tell me yourselves as members of parliament. When I came here before, I told you, on the crackdown on illegal machines, gambling, you are the ones who represent the people of Kenya and the children of Kenya. You know what this nonsense has done to our children in the villages. I have over 26 court orders. Served all over the place. No judge, no magistrate is calm enough to say, go serve P.S. Kibicho, come before me, so that you argue your case. On crackdown on illicit brews, I have, I don't know how many court orders, I've stopped the count. Served on county commissioners, regional commissioners, chiefs, everybody. You can actually sell poison in this country because all you need is to go to court and get a court order and put it on your door and sell poison in this country. And, and no one says, let, let go, go serve the peers, let us listen, let us hear the two of you so that we understand what the truth is. That's what I'm saying. It's a clique of judicial officers. It's not about the judiciary. Our judiciary has got some of the finest people in the country. There's a clique in the judiciary that has been captured by a group of people in civil society and a clique of activist lawyers. And they're riding roughshod. Have you wondered, members of parliament, because you have the burden of leadership, have you wondered in the last three years, one civil society activist in Kenya has obtained nearly 30 court orders, expected 30 court orders, expert from the court. He walks in, he gets an order, comes out. He walks in, he gets an order, comes out. In fact, he could even walk in today and say he wants an order so that all cabinet secretaries commit suicide. You'll get the order. <laughs> he walks in, gets an order, comes out. What does that say about our judicial system? Last Wednesday, the whole day, last Wednesday, the whole day, the Attorney General spent time begging for one thing, to be heard. If we had been heard by that judicial officer, they would have been told what we are telling you. Mr. Miguna is on the air side. He is not in the custody of Boynet. Boynet cannot produce him because he doesn't have him. The director of immigration would have said, this guy is not held. This would have been said. Then the judicial officer proceeds to make a 36-page ruling. Just ask yourself, a 36-page ruling in 20 minutes, even if you are a paragon, it's in that evidence that there's collusion going on elsewhere and things are being brought to the judicial system to try and stall this. And then he says, when, when the judicial officer orders that we go to court, he says, let them come, but I will not hear them. What does that mean? What do you want us? You want us for humiliation parade so that you can drag us by the collar through the street of public opinion. It's not an interest to resolve issues. How can you be condemned and hard? As I told you, this is another story. Somebody should show me this is the affidavit of service that shows that you were served a court order. This is what's happening. 
there is an evil clique of judicial officers working with activist lawyers and elements in the civil society who are determined to make sure that the executive branch does not function. And they will issue order after order after order after order. You cannot move. And, and, and you know, look, you are at the security committee. If Boinetti receives an anticipatory order, you know, you, you prepare to commit a crime, then you go to court and come up with an anticipatory order. We are hearing it's an invention in Kenya's judicial system, an anticipatory order. So you can't be arrested. So you go, get the order, and arrive here, and go and break into Honorable uh, Mujiri's house. You have an order. You anticipate that you're going to make a mistake. You cannot be arrested. And, and let me tell you, at a personal level, and this should be on the record, I am in Parliament. I witnessed this when I was in the Ministry of Education. Until Justice Mumbi Ngugi saved us in the education sector, we had about 30-something court orders served left, right, and centre. You can't have a school board, you can't have what? On the basis of a letter, honourable members, a letter, a piece of paper that was signed by the late Mutula Kelonso, given to an individual who purported to represent all parents. And he walked around the country collecting money. He has the orders in Majakos, orders in Kakamega, orders wherever, Garissa, every, nothing moves. So, if, I don't know what you can do, and I can't prescribe, because you are as much government as we are. We are equal, we are at bar. So, I can't direct you, I can't command the parliament, I can't do anything. All I can do as a member of the executive branch is present the reality and inform you as it is. And you, more than anyone else in the security sector, to look into this and see how best this will facilitate or inhibit the management of security in the country. Because if you give an anticipated order to a criminal, Boinet is not going to arrest the criminal. And if you follow, those anticipated orders are being given by a certain clique of judicial officers. Not all judges who do them. It's a certain group of judicial officers. And the lawyers who go to them, you can count them. And the civil society activists involved, you can count them. It's a collusion. It's a group of people who collude and do this kind of thing. When you listen, because a judge asked me from the Commonwealth last week, a judge rang me up when this was playing up. He's a friend of mine who knows me, he's a judge from a Commonwealth country, asked me a question I couldn't answer. Asked me, when Justice Rosalina Brilli received this application that your guy is held at the airport, was the world going to come to an end if she said, serve the director of immigration and come before me tomorrow? Was the world going to come to an end? Because that way, the director of immigration would have explained what was going on. One, we can't arrest this guy. He's on the air side. Two, he's not in our custody, so we can't produce him. Three, receive a report from us. You should receive the comments of the Kenya National Human Rights Commission, which have not been heard and have not been received in court. So you have one order issued on top of another order and so on and so forth. And it's like a race within this clique of judicial officers. It's like a race on who can humiliate the executive more, who can embarrass the executive more. The more you can injunct the executive, the more you can stall the executive, the higher the officials you can embarrass the more heroic you become. That's all I can say on that point. And lastly, the point is this, uh, Honourable Members. Uh, I'm not able to comment on what uh, Honourable Tucci said because I didn't see the full program. Uh, so I didn't understand the full context in which he said what he said. So it would be unfair, and again it's the principle of collective responsibility, to comment on a reported matter. I would need to see the whole thing so that I'm able to respond to, to that issue. And then lastly, uh, the issue of going public. You know, we can't go public on everything we do every day. We, we try to work as diligently as we can and hope that other people will also not only do their work, but will also be honest enough in the manner in which they conduct themselves. Tell me one thing, honorable members as leaders. Why wouldn't you want to hear the government? Why on earth wouldn't you want to hear the government on a weighty matter like this? You make final orders, and when the Attorney General comes before you, you say you don't want to hear the Attorney General. When the Attorney General begs and says, the Minister and the Inspector General are at the GSU parade, you say the GSU parade is not that important. When they say they have not been served, you say, eh, I've been on TV the whole morning. I was expected to be watching TV at the GSU parade so that I know what has happened. Thank you. Then you have the
could not be told. Yeah, that's it. Hmm? I speak in the documents, but denouncing. But you would respond to that. <laughs> Renouncing. This. Chair, uh, through the cabinet secretary, if you can recall before the August uh, 2010 uh, new constitution, the government of Kenya only allowed, did not allow dual, which means you could not hold citizenship of two nationalities. It was therefore deemed that anybody who had acquired uh, had acquired citizenship of another country at that time when Duo was not allowed, it does not mean that he lost his birthright. But at that stage, he was deemed to have actually gained the citizenship of the other country but lost the other one. But there was also a provision, a ride on to it, that you can regain it. And that's why the cabinet secretary has clearly said that even those people who are overseas today, regaining is even online. You do the regaining by applying the relevant forms. You send them to the Department of Immigration. And that is now compiled and forwarded for the CS to now endorse. And then once you regain, you go back to now get your ID. So ideally, the ID Miguna has today is actually an invalid document. He will, even when he regains the citizenship, he will have to, have to go to NRB to now get <coughs> his ID, and then he can now process the passport. That is as simple as that. So that process is communicated, and many Kenyans are really doing it. And then there is also repercussion. When you are a dual citizenship, there are also certain jobs you can actually get in the government, and there are certain jobs you cannot. That's why it is important. Even after the 2010 uh, constitution, you, when you are a duo, you are supposed to declare so that the government will know when to, where to engage you. I mean, you may probably not be engaged in security because you are a person who is two-legged. So we cannot really uh, entrust you with a, a number of uh, things. So there is also a rider to that when you become a dual citizen. So I think that is the only way I can explain it, Chair. Yeah,